What's the matter? You've never seen New York before? Mrs. Wong let me in. I think she got a little tired of me ringing on the bell. I was asleep. What? Yeah. Bad dreams again. Those for me? Where's Colleen? Gone. Gone where? Gone, gone. Well, if you lived in a place that was a little bit more upscale, you might be able to hang on to one of these girls. I love it here. A little less love for old buildings and more for people, and you might get laid more often. <laughs> Pardon me, ladies. Ni hao, Michael. Ni hao, ladies. <laughs> Police another tourist? <laughs> Sheep were made to be sheared. Look after the place for me, will you? Going to London again? I'm afraid so. But you've just come back. Work. You should go to Paris. This time of year is very romantic. <laughs> I'll try and keep that in mind. And besides, I can see very bad things in London for you. Oh, yeah? Where do you see these things? Your crystal ball? No, online. I've printed it out for you. They're calling him the new Ripper, like Jack. Jack the Ripper has returned to London. Nice woman. Oh, yeah. Let's hit the road. The tunnel was a nightmare. I'll take the Williamsburg. They're working on the LIE. We're okay. Welcome to London Heathrow. Passengers arriving on flight BS005 from New York JFK can collect their baggage from carousel number five. It's a nice hotel. You run us a car? Right in front of you. What are you trying to do, Jake? Bankrupt us? <laughs> what the hell? I thought when in Rome. <laughs> the Arcadia Hotel. They don't build them like this anymore. Is it speaking to you? Good. I got some ex-wives that need me to close this deal. Congratulations, Mr. Lewis. We knew that you were the man for the job. Damn right he is. The best goddamn architect you'll ever meet. In the plan of my building. That really was a beautiful presentation. Well, she's a beautiful building. I look forward to restoring her. To tell you the truth, it's a dream job. I should be paying you. <laughs> hey, that's enough of that. We knew that you were something special when we saw what you'd done with the old mutual building in Baltimore. Well, I just tried to stay true to the spirit. With the spirit? Every old building's got one. I just try and stay true to it. I think that it's going to be very interesting working with you, Mr. Lewis. <laughs> I hope so. Ah, there is just one other thing. An instruction from our employer, the owner of the Arcadia. Yeah, when do we get to meet this guy? I'm afraid you don't. Really? What's the request? Right this way. The door at the end and the room beyond are to remain unopened and untouched. 
For how long? Forever. You want to build around it. You're kidding. I'm afraid not. Our employer was quite insistent. Your company receiving a contract is dependent upon this room remaining sealed. Well, I think we can agree to that. shouldn't be in here. It's dangerous. Albert Brown. Let's get better acquainted, Albert. That doesn't make any sense. Jake, listen, I'm working late at the Arcadia. I've been doing a little research into our mysterious employer. It turns out the Arcadia Hotel was sold to one Albert Brown 10 years ago. Only problem is, Albert died 90 years ago, age three months. Someone's obviously using it to hide their identity. The only question is who and why.
Hey, if there's anybody up there, I just want you to know I'm gonna kick your ass. Maybe. Security. <laughs> you must be Mr. Lewis. Yeah. This arrived for you earlier. Thanks. You take care, sir. You too. Good night. It's gonna be okay, Margaret. I'm gonna get you some help. Can you help us, please? Can you help us, please? Can you call an ambulance? Can you please call an ambulance? What is the matter with you? All right, Margaret. I'm gonna get some help. I'll be right back, okay? There's been an accident. I need an ambulance on the corner of... Church and Old Street. It's all right. They're on their way. It's gonna be okay, Margaret. I'm gonna get you some help. It's all right. You mustn't worry, Mike. How do you know my name? I'm sorry for what I've done. I haven't got much time. They'll be here in a minute. No. No, you, you don't understand. I can't take the burden anymore. I know you can be strong. Look, how many times do you need me to go through it? I told the sergeant at the desk and then the guy before him. Procedure, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. It's been a long night. She just stepped right in front of the car. There was nothing I could do. And you have to believe that. We do. Detective Sergeant Price, it's all right, don't get up. The woman's name was Margaret Smith. She was a patient at St. Teresa's. However, when I called them, they didn't even know she was gone. Apparently, she just got up out of bed and walked out. Why was she in the hospital? Cancer. Terminal. The doctor said she should have been dead weeks ago. She was staring straight at me. 
Well, they had her on heavy medication, so she probably didn't even know where she was. We are going to have to hang on to your car until the tests are complete. Tests? Don't worry. Standard forensics, just procedure. The rental company have already sent you a replacement. You're free to go, Mr. Lewis. Just like that? Great. Well, thanks. Thank you. I guess you were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. I guess. Listen. She knew my name. Sorry? She knew my name. It's the Ripper! They found another body! No! no. 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 Price! Milt! Get in here! Move it! Take my card. Price! You don't blame yourself. It wasn't your fault. and man hours in surveillance on a suspect that was 50 miles from this killing. There's a pattern. No, Price, there's no pattern. The killings are random. I don't buy that. I'm not trying to sell it! I no longer care what you believe or don't believe. Your involvement in this investigation is over. What? Orders from on high, Price. If they don't see results, they want to see change. You and Mills are off. Box 745. You have 21 new messages. You've taken her away from us. You cannot walk away from this. Who is going to help us now? You'll pay for what you've done. Killer! Ah, thanks for coming. If I'd known you were going to call so soon, I would never have given you my number. Did you touch anything? The phone, I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking. Perhaps it was a different room. What? Maybe earlier you went into somebody else's room by mistake. I know what room I'm in. Welcome, mailbox 745. You have no messages at this time. Wasting police time is a criminal offence. Look, it had something to do with that woman. Whatever your problem may be, Mr. Lewis, it has nothing to do with Margaret Smith. I suggest you talk to your doctor. Or psychiatrist.
Okay. Been in London two days now. Killed someone. Totaled a seventy thousand dollar car and twenty one people who I've never met. Hate me. Things are going well. you've done. Who are you? Hey! So who the hell is this guy? Look, I don't know. You should go to the police. I already went to the police. They think I'm a nut. Yeah. Mr. Lewis. Yeah? My name is Charles Dodgson. I'm a lawyer, and I represent the estate of the late Margaret Smith. I have some information for you, and I wonder if you'd be so good as to call by my offices, which are located at Six Little Court. Someone has a sense of humor. What do you think? Gloomy, with a distinct air of menace and danger. Well, if we're gonna poke around old scary buildings, let's be prepared. How come I get the basement? Take a seat. Quite the office you have here. Yes, we uh, had a fire recently. No kidding. Right, my time is rather limited, so if you don't mind, let's proceed directly to business. My client, the late Margaret Smith, left instructions that you were to be given these. And when exactly did she leave these instructions? Two days before her death, shortly after she summoned you to London. Summoned me? That's correct. No, that's not correct. I, I came to London to work. I came here to, to... restore the Arcadia Hotel, which was owned by my client, Margaret Smith. It appears you are to be her successor, her heir, in manner of speaking. Wait, I, I don't even know her. But she knew you. Okay. What do I inherit? You'll find it all explained. Now, you may open the box now, and the envelope only once you have used the contents of the box. Mr. Lewis, one last thing. 
Only you are to use the contents therein. Sure you don't want me to come in with you? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks. Nineteen seventy five. By now, you know the truth. You have the sight, Michael, just as I did. You can see into the shadows between the darkness of this world and the light of the next. You can see that the dead do walk amongst us. I've dedicated my life to helping them. But now I'm tired and weak. Too weak to continue. I have to find someone to carry on my work. Someone with a sight. Someone like you. Hello, Michael. Hello. That's better. You know, these are what killed me. But that's the great thing about the afterlife. No repercussions. Doesn't taste quite the same, though. Would you like to step outside? You look as if you need some air. Look at this. For 60 years, I knew the rules. What you're wearing when you die is what you come back in. And I have to die in this. Stupid. Stupid. I don't believe this is happening. Me neither. Now I have to spend the afterlife with my ass hanging out. What is going on? You have the sight, Michael. I see it clear as day. So do the dead. That's why they're drawn to you. They know that you can help them. You have a gift. A gift that no one else possesses. You should embrace... Stop it. Just... Stop talking to me. You're dead. You died in the street. I saw you die. I'm sitting on this bench. I'm alone. You're not alone, Michael. I'm here. Yeah, well... We'll see. Hey! Kid! Come here! Yeah, come here! We'll see. I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. Think I'm strange? Maybe. What about her? Think she's strange? She's dressed funny. You can see her? We can all see her, silly. She's dead, just like us. I tried. 
tried to tell you. Hey, mister. Do you know Alice? Alice. There, Alice. She says you're her friend. She says you're going to help us. Are you? That's enough. You run along and play somewhere else. And take your friends with you. Come on. Come on, let's go. Who are they? There's a killer hunting in this city. He hunts for children. You were looking at his victims. I kept photographs of the murder sites, newspaper cuttings, anything that might be of some use. Until justice is done, their ghosts are trapped in limbo, not part of this world and unable to pass to the next. Catch the hunter, Michael. Catch him before he kills again. What makes you think I can do this? We didn't choose you at random. We? This world is not quite what you think it is. What is that? Am I right out of here? What do you mean? You've agreed to help me. My work here is finished. Sorry, Michael. That's the way it works. Rabbit in the hole. You know why Colleen left? She told me I couldn't communicate. Jake, something's going on. I can't really explain what it is, but... You know when you know something? And it's like you've always known it, but you didn't know you knew it until you know it. You know what I'm talking about? No. Listen, I'm gonna need a little time. You have to cover for me. Jake? Things might get a little weird. I know what you are. I can help you. No. I don't think so. It's okay. I understand. Come on, we're late. What are you doing? Well, nothing. This guy's just trying to pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> Day. Yeah, <laughs> you could say that. Staying in the hotel? No, just visiting. Ah.
That's right. The name's Isabel. It's best you just deal with one of us, so the others chose me. Others? How, ma how many are there? Twenty-one in all. But you already knew that. Wait, where exactly are, are the others? Well, they're never far away. Okay, been in London three days now. Killed someone, watched them return from the dead, inherited 21 ghosts. Can't wait to see what tomorrow brings. This is where the killer snatched Alice. Alice! Michael needs your help. He needs to see the bad man. Take her hand. But be careful. Her fear will be your fear. Her pain, your pain. Get it. Why risk bring her all the way up here? Why not kill her at the river? You wanted to display her body. Okay, well then why not up there? Why go to all this trouble and then stash her way down here? No, there's something about this place, this building, this particular spot. Isabel, what is it? Tell Michael. Bad man said something else to me. What? I have to whisper it. It's a rude word. I see you put in the ground, you little bitch. What is it? When was Alice killed? Seven days ago. We're going to her funeral. Alice Collins was taken away from us far too early. She was plucked like a rosebud from our Lord's garden without ever having the chance to blossom. But we are not here today to judge the evil that has destroyed this family. We are here to celebrate the time that Alice spent with us, with her family, her friends, and her loved ones. Don't cry, I'm here. soon. Look very carefully, Alice. Do you see any stranger here? No. You're sure? Yes. That's Mummy, Daddy, Grandpa, Uncle Paul and Mary, Auntie Joan, although she's not my real auntie, she just lives next door. That's Toby, Tracy and Alec. They're my cousins. What about him? Uncle David, he smells bad. I don't understand it. He said he's see her put in the ground. He should be here.
have spoken to all of the children, the stories are the same. He doesn't just kill at random. He goes to a lot of trouble abducting the children and then bringing them somewhere else to kill them. He risks detection every time he does that, which means where he kills them is important in some way. But what is so important about these buildings, office blocks, parking garages, just a collection of bad 50s architecture? I told you, he can't do it. How can he help us? He's an amateur. Look, Michael, maybe you should get some rest. You don't look so good. Even Clay looks better. And he's dead. Isabel, there's a pattern here. I just have to stop being so stupid and see it. Amateur. it used to be. It used to be? It's where I belong. Not here. Will you show me? Hello? Yep, Price. Call for you. Line one. London, present day. Do you know what's going on? Don't ask me. I just came here to build a hotel. The arrows point to the murder sites. The child killer. Buildings where the murders took place. What do the buildings have in common? Murder. Apart from that, look at the buildings themselves. They were all built in the 50s. And the buildings around the murder sites on the edge of the photograph? Older, a lot older. New buildings in an old neighborhood, why? All built in the 1950s, why? The old buildings were torn down, so what? Not torn down, blown down. Now take a look at this. London 50 years ago, right after the Second World War. Notice anything? Yeah, the murder sites are all in those shaded patches. Correct. What are they? Bomb sites. Huge chunks of London that were leveled during the Second World War, turned into a wasteland. All the buildings the bodies were found in were constructed on derelict bomb sites. After the war, 
Those bomb sites were crawling with kids. They used them as a playground. At night, it would have been dark and secluded. A wilderness right in the heart of the city. Perfect place for a killer to hunt. The perfect place for a killer to hunt? I said that. It can't be a coincidence. Our killer has gone to a huge amount of trouble to place the bodies on the exact location of the bomb sites. Which means... He's a copycat. He's recreating a series of old murders. Who the hell are you? Not so bad for an amateur. You must have considered the possibility that he was a copycat. Anything dating that far back would have been kept on paper files so it would never have showed up on the computer. Sergeant Bills? Yes, ma'am. You opened up the files? Yes, as you requested, ma'am. Everything from 1945 to 1960. There's a lot of it. Then let's get to it, gentlemen. Exactly when did we become detectives? Hey, shouldn't we get some help? I mean, don't you have a whole police force for this sort of thing? My credibility on this case isn't exactly high. I don't want to go to anyone till we've got more proof. something no <clears throat> nothing Pika got him I got the bugger Eric Mace killed eight people between November 57 and January 58 seven were children the last was an adult stumbled across him at the site of one of the murders Failed priest, strict religious upbringing, thought he was on some kind of holy crusade. What about the murder sites? They match exactly then and now. And the dates of the murders, profiles of the children, identical. You may be an American, Mr. Lewis, but you're a bloody genius. A bloody genius. Eight killings. If our man's a copycat, there's two victims left. When's the next one? In two hours. I can't authorize this. You're not even supposed to be on the case. I know I made a mistake A before. mistake? <laughs> you have no idea how much heat I took for you, Price. Now you want me to do it all over again? Call out the Met on the basis of some wild theory cooked up by a foreign tourist. He's not a tourist. I don't give a damn what he is. <laughs> I took a chance on you once, Price. I can't afford to do that again. But what if he's right? What if in two hours the killer strikes again and we could have been there to stop him? <sighs> okay. Take Mills, stake it out. But you're on your own, Price. There's just one more thing. What? I need you to issue firearms. <laughs> Absolutely not. You don't have a gun? This is England. Please don't carry guns. What happens when you want to arrest a violent criminal? I use my winning smile. Five minutes to go. You know what I don't get? Why copycat Eric Mace? It's not like he's particularly famous. No one remembers him. I can understand Manson or Bundy, but Eric Mace. Oh, it's strange. It's like the letters to the press. What letters? Exactly, there haven't been any. That unusual? 99% of these cases, the killers write letters to the press or police or both. They want to impress us, show us how clever they are. Well, this one, not one letter, not one phone call. It's as if he doesn't care what we think. Maybe it's not us he's trying to impress. Then who? Eric Mace. Maybe the killer's trying to show Mace he can do a better job. No, Eric Mace was hanged in 1959. 
So much for that theory. Cold up here, isn't it? Yeah. Cigarette? No, thanks. No, I mean, have you got one? I quit. Shame. It's time he should be here. Maybe the records are inaccurate. Maybe. You're right, we're doing something wrong. No, it has to be here. 42 years ago, the murder took place on this spot. He has to bring her here. He has to bring her to this spot. Then why isn't he here? What is that? I'm not sure, I think. Oh my God, it's an entrance to the sewer system. He's under our feet. underneath the building.
Mr. Lewis. Hold still. Just hold still. Okay, move my arm. No struggle. I said found struggle, damn it. I hold this bastard down. What the hell is going on? Give him a shot. Wait a minute! You just got the wrong guy here. Don't say a word. All that information he had about the killer, trying to tell us what a brilliant detective he was. Yeah, well, maybe there's another explanation. A simpler explanation. You think he's involved? Involved? <laughs> We've got his prints on the murder weapon, the victim's blood on his clothes, not to mention the fact that neither you nor Mills saw anyone else down there in the tunnel. I was with him for hours. The victim was taken a day ago. Her parents reported him missing yesterday. All that time he was with you, he could have had a store down there, just waiting. But why? To do it under our very noses. To make fools of us? God knows you succeeded in that. Yeah, Michael Lewis is suspect number one, okay? And until I know better, he remains in police custody. Mr. Lewis? You're my lawyer. I have many talents. So tell me, what comes after Curious, sir? I'm afraid we're about to find that out. Things look that good, huh? You seem to have done a remarkably good job of putting yourself in the frame. And the police have your prints on the murder weapon, they have the victim's blood on your clothes, they've also found press clippings about the murders in your office, as well as photographs of the murder sites. On top of all this, you show an extraordinary insight into the actions of the killer. Ooh, very incriminating. Well, only if you put it like that. Especially problematic, however, is your seemingly extensive knowledge of the victims. The reason you came by this information will be a little hard to explain, don't you think? A little. Good rule in life, Mr. Lewis. Always remember. People don't like people who see dead people. You know about that? I know a good many things. Visitor for you. I'm Andrew Norrington. I'll be acting in your defence. I thought he was. He? Who? Him? I don't understand, Mr. Lewis. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Yeah, shot by my partner, who then burnt the building to cover his tracks. Mr. Lewis? <laughs> Please, Mr. Lewis, we don't have much time together, and to be frank, things don't look good. <laughs> you bet they don't. I knew this kid in college. <laughs> I mean, he's in you know, great suits and everything, fools the clients, but uh, underneath the Armani, he's, uh, he's about as bad as they get. You should be glad we don't hang people here anymore. <laughs> now, the police case is very strong. They already have... My print on the murder weapon, blood on the clothes, press clippings at my office, and I have an extraordinary knowledge on the actions of the murderer. You're very well informed. Bad news travels fast. And to make matters worse, you attend the funeral of one of the victims. That doesn't look good. Where do you get these? Standard police procedure. 
Many killers like to attend the funeral of their victims, so there's always a surveillance team. Unfortunately for us, Mr. Douglas? Yes? We've got some questions. Do you have a few moments? Well, I'm not going anywhere, am I? Do you remember somebody called Eric Mace? Young lady, I may be minus a lung and a kidney, but my memory remains intact. Yeah. Sick little man. Spoke with a stutter. You were the arresting officer, right? Are you a policeman? This is official police business. I said, are you a police man? She's a policewoman. That, sir, is perfectly clear. You're a very sharp man, Mr. Douglas. Just because you're old, you're not stupid, you know. Right. What do you want to know? Anything that's not in your report. Anything you might have left out. In fact, anything that could be of help to us. I don't think I can help you. You could at least take a look at it. I don't think that would do much good. Oh, I, I'm sorry. No one told us. Why should they? I recall the case well enough, but everything I had to say went in here. Right, well, we're sorry for bothering you. Wait. Something wrong here. What is it? There's a page missing. See here, look, the last page is gone. Do you remember what was on it? Probably details of his ninth victim. Ninth? But Mace killed only eight people. Yeah, that's right. But he'd already kidnapped his ninth victim. We found him in the basement of Mace's house. He'd been there for two days, poor lad. With Mace ranting and raving at him, terrified after death. What was the boy called? David. David. David Connor, that's right. Uh, sad case. Boy never recovered. In and out of mental hospitals for years. Not surprising, considering what he'd been through. And when he grew up? Well, no idea. You could consult his doctor, I suppose, if he's still alive. You think this kid had something to do with the killings? Why else would someone try and hide his existence? I thought that David Connor was the victim. There's a well-documented history of kidnapped victims coming to sympathize with their captors. It's called the Stockholm Syndrome. And remember, David Connor was just a child, frightened, impressionable, alone. Imagine the kind of effect that would have on his mind. Douglas did say the kid was in and out of mental institutions. So this boy grows up to be a man, same age as Eric Mace, and decides to complete his holy work. Copycats usually have a clear psychological reason for what they do, for why they copy one murderer and not another. And being closely tied to the original killer would explain a lot. So maybe Michael was right. Maybe this killer is trying to impress Eric Mace. The final murder was at 12 midnight. Try and get a lead on David Connor. Try his doctor first. Well, what are you going to do? Take more direct action. Not good enough. What? Think, Michael. They're relying on you. What do you want me to do? You agreed to help. I am in jail. I can't even help myself. Not good enough. You're not Michael the architect anymore. You accepted the burden. The burden? I don't even have shoelaces. You want Alice to have another little friend? That is not fair. Then help them.
Lewis, on your feet. You're being transferred. Sergeant Mills, the surveillance team. Check the surveillance team. What the hell are you doing? I think you have the wrong man. You could go to jail for this place. If Michael's right, then the killer is going to strike again tonight at midnight. I'm not about to let that happen. And I'm not about to let this happen either. This is madness, place. I can't stand by and let you screw up your career. Then help me. This is really most unorthodox. Where on earth are my glasses? See, this is police business. Official police business. David Carter. Uh, was a patient for many years, very disturbed. He believed that the spirit of his captor lived on inside him. Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah, but in a very extreme form. David Connor believed that somehow Eric Mace had taken possession of him during the two days of his imprisonment. He, he was a young boy, you understand, a young mind. So impressionable. He'd even break down, stutter occasionally, in the manner that Mace had. How long did you treat him? Ten years. Till he was 16. But in the end, you understand, he was cured. Cured? Totally. Oh, I know he changed his name. Not uncommon with the background he'd had. Do you know the name? I'm afraid not. Do you know what happened to him? I'm not sure. But I do know what he'd have liked to have become. Not surprising, seeing they'd saved his life. David dreamed of becoming a policeman. Killer. He worked for the police. He was on the surveillance team at each of the funerals. So that's how he could watch Alice and the others being put in the ground? Exactly. Next murder's at midnight. I gotta get out of here. How? Trashed hotel room. They asked it on the car. How did you do that? The others were angry. They thought you weren't gonna help us. Which means? That when we're passionate enough, angry enough, we can move things in the real world. Find Alex. Find the others. Bring them here. My considered legal advice on this situation would be, uh, run like hell. records on Eric Mays. His last two murders took place on the same site. The final one at 12 midnight. So police assume that during the first murder, Mays had accidentally left something behind at the scene of the crime, something that could point to him as being the killer. So when he realized... He, he returned, returned to find it. 
and surprised the child's mother on the bomb site. She was lighting a candle for her lost daughter. I read the file. The killing of the girl's mother was a departure for Mason. 36 years of age, medium build, blue eyes. The most beautiful blue eyes. And unlike yours, Detective Price. This way, I believe. Almost there. You seem very sure. What? Of where we're going. Considering you've never been here before. What are you trying to say? Don't come any closer. Price! It's all I could find. Thanks, Mills. You made it just in time. Yeah. Just a couple of minutes to spare. Time's wasting. Eric? Clever. But too little. Too late, I'm afraid. Where are we going? To finish my work, of course. You're going to set me free. Mr. Lewis, how resourceful of you. I'm impressed. No. Step aside. Can't do that. Step aside or I'll gut her here. I don't think so. Same victim, same place, same time. Killing her there just wouldn't work. What would Eric think? You're right. Of course. But I can kill you anywhere. <laughs> thought you could stop us alone. I didn't come alone.
I knew you could help us. Not bad. For an amateur. For an amateur. <laughs> Ensure uncertain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We therefore commit his body to be consumed by fire, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I guess that's the last we'll see of Eric Mace. I hope so. Are you gentlemen planning on staying in London long? We have a contract to complete, a hotel to build. Damn. Excuse me. <sighs> well then. Price. Thanks. Michael, I've seen some pretty strange stuff this last week. But whatever you've got yourself involved with, just remember, you're not alone. You can say that again. I need a working crew, and I need them next week. We got to get rolling on this. Yeah, okay, I'll talk to you later. Think he's the one? No. How can you be so sure? He knows nothing of the days. Barely knows the truth about himself. How can he know anything else? you at random. This world isn't quite what you think it is. He knows nothing of the days. He barely knows the truth about himself. <laughs> 